Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is our King. We give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. Yes, we do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles. Welcome to Healing School. My name is Dr. Garen Gatling. We've been talking these, uh, beginning last week on the subject of confession. That's confession part one. Today we'll get into part two and how our tongues or our mouth have a whole lot to do with our health. The Bible teaches that very, 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 very plainly. And we're going to review some things from last week today. And then we'll go into the second half of this message on confession. Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome the presence of the Holy Ghost, whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide. We expect the blessed Holy Spirit to live big within us today, to unveil, unfold, and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits to enlighten us and grant us revelation on the subject of divine healing and health. Jesus, you are the healer. We thank you for coming to Healing School, and we thank you, Jesus, for instructing us in your ways. In Jesus' mighty name, we're so happy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Lord is my primary care physician. The Lord is my health care provider, and the Lord's word is my medicine. My hope, my earnest, intense expectation and my hope is that you've been saying that at least once a day, at least once a day. Let's say our uh, foundational text, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. If you have your healing cards, go ahead and grab those. And you ready? Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Matthew eight sixteen and 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And finally, 1 Peter two twenty four who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that I, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed, by whose stripes I was healed, by whose stripes I am healed. That verse, that vintage classic healing text, should be embedded on the hearts and minds of every born-again believer. That's a text that needs to be memorized, meditated on, and maintained for the rest of your existence. Powerful, powerful text of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us at the cross of Calvary. All right, let's go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, once again. And let's look at our text. Uh, my prayer is that you wrote those scriptures down last week, and then you meditate and study them for yourself. Um, and if you haven't, then go ahead and do that this week. All right, Matthew chapter 10. Let's look at uh, boom, 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 verse 32. Whosoever, remember Jesus is speaking, or let's say it this way. Dr. Jesus is speaking. Okay, this is healing school. So let's, let's let Dr. Jesus do the talking. Now listen to what the doctor said. Whosoever shall confess me before men... Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Did you hear what Jesus said? If you haven't already underlined or marked or highlighted that word confess, go ahead and mark both of those, okay? And then turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And let's look at verse 8. Dr. Jesus is speaking again. He says, Also I say unto you, Whosoever, I said this last week, Every time Jesus says whosoever, he is establishing universal law. This will work for anybody, anywhere, anytime. In the summer, it'll work in the winter. It'll work in the fall. It'll work in North America. It'll work in South America. Whosoever shall confess, there it goes again, go ahead and circle that, me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess. Jesus said, you're confessing? I'm confessing. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. He said, by my stripes, you're healed. 
himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases. Jesus said, I'm going to say he, I took your infirmity and bore your diseases. I'm speaking on you. You said I'm saying it. You confess it, I'm confessing it. You confess it here on earth, I'm confessing it for the Father and angels. He's healed, he's healed, and I'm not here saying I'm healed, I'm healed, and he's up there saying he's healed, he's healed, and I'm saying I'm healed, I'm healed, and he's up there saying he's healed, he's healed. Glory to God. Woo! Isn't that powerful? All right, go to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. I love that. I'm happy already. Glory to God. Look at uh, chapter 3. Look at verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Please mark that word. Profession. The anointed Jesus. Now, as I stated last week, most modern translations, and if you study this out in the Greek, the word profession is actually translated confession. And I, and I asked you last week to go study it out for yourself. My hope is that you did go study that for yourself. Now, the word confession simply means to say the same thing as, right? We talked about that. My hope is that you went and studied that out for yourself. Always do homework after healing school. I don't think I've ever said it that way before. Always go do your homework after healing school. Don't let everything I say be the gospel. Go back and look it up for yourself. Study it out for yourself. That's when it becomes real to you. And that's when it starts to work for you. When you know it for yourself. Amen. All right. So it means to say the same thing as, or as I like to say, you can write this down. The practice of saying the same thing. It's a practice. The word practice simply means it's something that I perform uh, repeatedly or regularly in order to improve or maintain my proficiency. Does that make sense? That's what we're talking about with practice. Basketball practice, football practice, piano practice, see? Music class, you practice, choir practice, see? What are we doing? We're doing this regularly and repeatedly because we want to improve our proficiency. We want to get better. You want to make it a practice of saying the same thing as the anointed Jesus. You want to say the same thing he said. That's why I like the fact, I, I brought this out last week, that the translators put that word profession there in the King James. Because in my mind's eye, I see profession as my occupation. Now get this. In other words, it's what I do. Let me say it another way. Speaking in line with God's word is what we should do. It's our profession. It's our occupation. It's what we do. This is not just Sunday morning. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Glory to God. And then go home and say something else. Baby, what you say in church has to match what you say in the house. What you say in the house has to match what you say at work. What you say at work has to match what you say in the grocery store. What you say in prayer has to match what you say out there. You can't say one thing here and another thing there and think that's a profession. That's a hobby. <laughs> it's something you do every now and then when you ain't got nothing to do. You say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm healed. No, we're talking about a lifestyle. The Bible says no less than four times. Habakkuk chapter 2, you can write that down. Romans chapter 1, Galatians chapter 3, and Hebrews chapter 10, that the just shall live by faith. How do we live by faith? It's a lifestyle. Let me say it this way. Um, humans live by breathing. <laughs> right? You have to breathe. That's how you live. The just live by faith. We live by saying, by his stripes I'm healed. We live by speaking in line with God's word. It's our profession. And as I stated last week, your words and so do mine have a whole lot to do with our health. A whole lot to do. And we went and looked at those texts, you remember? We went to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4. I'll go ahead and quote that to you. The Bible says, a wholesome tongue or a healthy tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a break or a breach in the spirit. And the word wholesome there means healthy. Perverseness means a deviation from what's right and good. So when I, when I speak against God's word, I physically crush myself. But when I speak in line with his word, the Bible said, that's like a tree of life. That's healthy talk. Talk healthy. Glory to God. And then we went to Proverbs 8, uh, 12 and 18, where the Bible says, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. You remember that? 
So there are some people that speak and pierce themselves. In other words, you're saying stuff to hurt yourself. Oh, I'm sick again. Oh, she's a pain in my neck. Oh, this is just a killing me. Oh, I get sick every time this year. Piercing yourself, the Bible says. But he says, now, the tongue of the wise, see, the person that speaks in line with God's word, Proverbs 15 and 2, he uses his knowledge rightly. He rightly divides the word and he or she speaks in line with God's word. And that's healthy, the Bible said. That's the wise thing to do is speak in line with God's word. And then we went to Proverbs 18 and 21. You can write that scripture down. Where the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Not just death and not just life, but death and life are in the power of the tongue. I asked you to do a word study on that word tongue. And, I, and if you did, you, you found this phrase in your hand. So death and life are what? In your hand. If you study that out, you found that for yourself if you did your homework. Death and life is in your hand. You have something to do with it. Your words have a lot to do with it. The Bible says so. And then I ask you to draw two imaginary lines. One with the subject of death. One with the subject of life. And I ask you, when it comes to sickness, which heading would you put that under? And of course you'd put it under death. When it comes to healing, what heading would you put that under? Of course you'd put it under life. And so you can read that into the text and do no damage to it. The same way that death and life are in the power of the tongue or in your hand, healing or sickness is in the power of the tongue or healing or or sickness is in your hand. You have a whole lot to do with it. You didn't even know that, did you? See? And that's why the Bible says a wise person is going to use his knowledge aright. He's not going to speak and pierce himself. He's going to speak in line with God's word, and that's going to be that's going to be a tree of life for him or her. It'll keep them healthy. Amen. And then we went to the book of James, chapter 3, where the apostle James talked about if any man offend or stumble not in his words, he's able to control his whole body. You remember that? James chapter 3? You want to go look at it again? Let's go look at it. You're, you're right there in Hebrews. Flip over to the next book of James. Look at uh, chapter 3. Look at verse 2. For in many things we offend all. That word offend means you cause to stumble. You make mistakes, right? But listen to what he said. If any man doesn't stumble in his words or offend in his words, He's a mature man, and he's able to control or bridle his whole body. That's what the Bible says. And then he went on to give us illustrations. How a person can put a bit in a horse's mouth. And watch it. Have you seen a horse before? They're big and they're strong and powerful, right? That's why it's called horsepower in your car, right? He says, you can turn that horse around with a little bit in his mouth. He said, look at the ships. Even though they're so great, they're driven to fierce winds. He said, you can turn that thing around with a little small helm. Watch this. Whithersoever the governor listed. Now, that's old Elizabethan English. Let me give it to you in plain English. Wherever you choose, whatever you like, whatever you wish, that's where it's going. You're in control, see? And the same way James said that that horse is under your control, that ship is under your control. If you're the captain of that ship, if you're riding that horse, you're in control, see? He said the same way you're in control of your body, with your mouth. That's what the Bible says, see? And so it's important that we practice the saying, the same thing that the Bible says, and that we tame these tongues, that we discipline ourselves to believe that everything we say comes to pass. Now, we left off in the Gospel of Mark chapter 11. Let's go back there. That's where we left off last week. This is part two of confession here in healing school. Jesus is speaking, and this is, this is a classic text on the subject of faith. And listen to what Jesus said in verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, I'm going to pause and, and remind you of what we talked about already. Whenever Jesus says whosoever, he's establishing universal law. This will work for anybody, see? He said, whosoever shall say, notice the word say, you might want to underline that, circle it, mark it in your Bible. Whosoever shall say 
unto this fountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Let's apply this to healing. Whosoever shall say to his body, be healed in the name of Jesus and shall not doubt in his heart. Watch this. But believe that those things that he says, not the thing he said in church on Sunday, the things he continually says come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he says. See, and if you study the context of all that, Jesus spoke to a fig tree, and he's letting him, guys, it's not just the fig tree, you can speak to the mountain. All things you ask in prayer believing you can receive. Everything you say, you should be believing, be believing that they come to pass. Not just what you said Sunday or midweek Bible study, what you say all the time, what you say at work, what you say at Safeway, CVS, what you say at the supermarket, what you say down at the car lot. What you say, you know, in the parking lot. What you say at the, at, the air, at the airport. What you say when you're going down the runway. What you say when you're driving down the highway. Those things that you say. Not just what you said. We're talking about a lifestyle of saying. That's why it's called a profession or confession. What I practice saying on a regular basis. Did you get that? All right. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Proverbs 4. Start believing that everything you say comes to pass. Start believing. You might want to write that down. Start believing from this moment forward that everything you say comes to pass. Won't that change your life? Think about that. Believe that everything I say is going to happen. That's what Jesus said. Believe that those things that you say, those words that you say, see, those statements that you make all the time. The Lord's my primary care physician. That's one of the things that I say. He's my health care provider. That's one of the things that I say. The Lord's word is my medicine. That's one of the things that I say. I'm more than a conqueror. That's one of the things that I say. See? Things that I say. Start believing that everything you say comes to pass. If you're taking notes, write this down. Train your brain. Train your brain. Okay? All right. Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words. Give God's words your attention, see? Incline your ear to my sayings. Heard those, hear that? Words and sayings. Believe that those things that he says come to pass. The words and the sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and medicine to all their flesh. Did you hear that? You can take God's words and sayings and, and practice saying the same thing as. The word practice, I brought this up last week. Let me go over that again. Performing an activity or exercise repeatedly or regularly in order to improve or maintain one's proficiency. See? So I practice saying God's words and sayings. I attend to them. I incline my ear. I put his words before my eyes. I have my healing cards. I'm practicing every day, at least once a day. Himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases. Jesus healed all that were sick. I say it out of my mouth. I give it my attention. I'm practicing saying the same thing as Jesus, expecting those Things that I say to come to pass. I'm expecting healing to break forth in my body. I'm expecting to get well. Watch this. Improve one's proficiency. As your proficiency improves, your health will improve. As you continue to say what God says, your health will get better. See, there's a process. You want to get to a place like a basketball player. He or she is practicing her free throws. 
He's practicing his free throw. He might start out of being like 50%. Oh, he gets back and he practices another day. He's up to 60%. She keeps on practicing. She's at 72%. Next year, you know, when it's time to shoot a free throw, guess who they're going to call? <laughs> you playing basketball, technical foul? Um, Julie, you can shoot that baby. You're 92%. <laughs> Glory to God. You eventually get to the plate where you'll speak a thing. It'll come to pass. Glory to God. That's what Jesus said. Whosoever shall say. Practices the things that he says is coming to pass. When he speaks the thing, he's going to get it. The same way I spoke to the fig tree. The same way I spoke and said, Lazarus, come forth. He practiced what he preached. See, he believes that what he says comes to pass. Peace be still. Jesus said, if you'll practice saying the same thing, Believe that the things that you say come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you say. Glory to God. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Blessing and cursing is in your hand. Did you get that? Go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Pardon me, uh, chapter 30. Look at verse uh, 19. I call heaven and earth to record against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Let's say it another way. Sickness or health. It's out there. You have a choice, God said. Therefore, choose life or say it this way. Choose health. Why not? You have a choice that both you and your seed may live. That's right there in the Bible. God says, I'm setting, uh, heaven and earth is, is, is my witness today. I'm putting it out there before you. The blessings out there, the curse is out there, life is out there, death is out there, healing's out there, sickness is out there. You choose. It's in the power of your tongue. Remember that, Proverbs 18, 21? You and I have a choice to make. And one of the best things we can do is tame our tongue, train our brains, Take the time to renew our minds to the word of God so that we begin to think in line and speak in line with God's word. Because remember our opening text said, Jesus said, when you confess me before men, I'm confessing you before the Father. When you confess me before men, I'm confessing you before the angels of God. See, go to uh, Psalm 103. Please tell me you're writing all these texts down. Psalm 103. Look at verse uh, 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. What are angels doing? Hearkening to the voice of his word. So you're confessing before men, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Jesus is confessing you before the Father. He's confessing you before angels. Angels are hearkening to the voice of his word. What do you think they're going to do? <laughs> they're going to make sure healing comes, baby. They're going to do what they have to do to make sure healing comes to you. Glory to God. Go to Psalm 91. Verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. Can you see that? I'm going to say it, he said. I'm saying of the Lord. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. In him, I'm going to trust. Now, what is the psalmist doing? He's confessing before men. See? Now, watch this. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl, from the noise and pestilence. That word pestilence there literally means an infectious, deadly disease. Go look it up for yourself. He said, God said, I'll keep, I'll deliver him from that. Why? Because he said, I'm his refuge and his fortress. See, that's why I'm going to do it. That's because of what he said. He's saying the same thing that my word says. He's calling me his refuge. He's calling me his fortress. Go on down to verse um. 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You see what God did? He said, I sent angels to keep charge of him. Why? Because he's saying 
The Lord's my refuge, my fortress, and my God. I'm confessing him before the angels. He's saying it. I'm, angels, no infectious disease touches him. Why? Because he said so. Glory to God. We're working together. It's a heaven and earth connection. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the majesty in the heavens, interceding for you and me. And as we speak in line with his word, he's confessing us before the Father. He's confessing us before angels. And we're down here on earth saying, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases. Praise God. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus said it. He's talking to the angels. All right, he's speaking like my word. Father, he's speaking in line with the word. Glory to God. Heaven and earth is working together. We're speaking the word. Jesus is confirming the word. Healing is breaking forth in my body. Glory to God. Because I found out some things from the word and I began to use my knowledge aright. I don't deviate from what's right or good. I say what God says. I speak in line with what he said about my body, about my situation about my circumstance. I make the Lord my refuge and my fortress and my God. And in him, I'm going to trust. See, listen, uh, where is that one? Look at verse four. He shall cover me with his feathers. Under his wings, I'm going to trust. His truth is my shield and buckler. What is the truth is? His word is my shield. Praise God. Father, we bless you. We thank you for healing school today. I pray that these truths would dawn upon the spirits of the men and women listening today. I thank you for being their refuge and their fortress and their God. And I decree that no evil shall befall them. No plague, pestilence, or infectious disease will come near their bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've never May Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life, I'm extending that mercy to you today. That same Jesus that took your sickness and disease at the cross of Calvary, bore your iniquities. He carried your sorrows. He died and was buried. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. And if you believe that, you can be saved. Just say, Father, I believe this gospel that was taught and preached today. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he was buried. And I believe on the third day you raised him from the dead. And today I confess Jesus is my Lord. Please do yourself a great favor. Make sure you get attached to a local church. Get yourself a Bible. Study these truths out for yourself. Be a doer of the word and live by faith. You've been listening to the Kingdom Seekers radio broadcast and television broadcast. I'm Dr. Garen Gatling. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. Until then, you remember, if you're not living a life of love, you are simply not living yet. I'll see you next week.